I relapsed on NoFap and now I'm depressed. This happened to me so many times before God finally delivered me from this addiction. The longest I could go was 11 days. And whenever I would go a few days and just the urge and the temptation would overpower me and I had to relapse, I would be depressed and I would cry out to God. I would ask him, God, when is this going to happen? Eventually it happened and now I'm almost on five months. Barely any temptation anymore and no withdrawals at all. I just woke up, didn't feel like doing it. Five months in almost, still don't really feel like doing it. So, the question I have to ask you is how long do you want to continue living in fantasy land? Imagining one day I'm going to have a good wife. One day I'm going to have a righteous, God-fearing woman that I'm attracted to. Are you? Is God going to reward you for being a wicked man? Is God going to bless you with a woman that you can't handle because you can't even get yourself in check? You don't deserve it, bro. You haven't been obedient to God. You've been disobeying God. So use that as motivation to stay in the fight. Use that as motivation to continue to pray to God and make known to God what you want. God, I want to be healed from this demonic stronghold. I don't want to do this anymore. I need you to take it away from me. And eventually he will. Now he'll probably test you for many months like he did to me to see if you're really cut out for all this. To see if you're really going to seek him with all your heart. He will. Okay. So we got Psalm 23, man. I love this. I love to meditate. Anytime I do get tempted though, this is what I do. I'll have a conversation out loud with God for however long I have to about any anxieties, any stresses, any worry, anything. Conversation out loud, lay down on the floor, pray to God, read the Bible, meditate on the word to get my mind off the temptation because temptation will still come. Now it won't be as powerful as it used to be, but it will still come and sometimes it will get to you. Sometimes you'll have to, to run a mile to do whatever it is you have to do to stop thinking about it. So Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through a valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they cover me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then we got Psalm 128. And this is something I meditate on too because it talks about the reward of being a righteous man. Okay. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord who walks in his ways. When you eat the labor of your hands, you will be happy and it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house, your children like olive plants all around your table. Behold, thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. Powerful, bro. And fearing the Lord too is like, okay, I can't keep disobeying him because I know disobeying has consequences. God is merciful, but eventually you get to this point of like, I can't keep living this way. And we have a decision to make. And that decision is to keep following God. Keep crying out to God. Because one day he will deliver you. And I tell this time and time again. It's happened to me. But before it happened to me, I knew a guy that was working on one of the flip houses my mom was doing. And he smoked cigarettes for a long time. And at the time he was trying to quit. Then one day I saw him. I'm like, hey man, you don't smell like cigarettes. Have you been smoking? He's like, no, I haven't. And I was like, well... How long has it been since you smoked? He's like, oh, two weeks. I'm like, haven't had any withdrawals? You don't feel like doing it? He's like, no, I don't. God delivered me. And I'm like, wow, if only God could do that to me. And then by the time they completed the house and sold the house and he's working on my mom's next house, I see him again. And it's been like four months. Still hasn't smoked cigarettes. So it happened to him. Then it happened to me. It can happen to you. Proverbs 24, 16. I like this one too. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. A righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up. I fell way, way, way more than seven times. And I kept getting back up. I kept trying my absolute best. And it's crazy how powerful the temptation was how powerful the urges were the withdrawals all that it's like a roller coaster of emotions and symptoms and then when god delivered me i didn't experience that anymore now i'm still in the flesh so i will still be tempted jesus christ the son of god 
was in the flesh, and he was tempted. So we're always going to be tempted. But the fact is, I had no more withdrawals. I remember day 11, the day, the longest day I'd gone on my own. I was so emotional. I was just crying out loud and, and couldn't handle my emotions. It was just absolutely horrible, man. Jeremiah 17.10, actually 17.9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Again, man, God knows your heart. God knows the man that is desperately trying to quit this addiction, that is desperately trying to go on a streak and not do this anymore. He knows that man. And he also knows the man that is making up excuses and lying to himself and trying to talk himself into this addiction. Oh, it's okay. I, I'm not committing a physical act. I'm just looking at a woman and just, you know, trying to talk himself into it. See, I always knew, man. I always knew, yeah, I want to stop doing this. I know it's not good to do, but I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I was so in the flesh, man. And then eventually God called me. He probably called me many times, but this is when it really happened. You know, God called me. And I knew that this was putting up a wall between me and God. I knew, hey, you got to stop this. Eventually, you got to stop this. And then I stopped the videos. I was done with the videos for like four or five months and just doing it to do it because... The withdrawals were just too powerful. You know, busting, I couldn't stop. Videos, I could stop. It was all about busting for me. As soon as I busted, the lust went away. The withdrawals went away. The temptation went away. And I knew if I could just bust and not watch videos, I would be good. So stop the videos, and I'm like, okay, well, got to stop busting now. And I would try. I would go five days without doing it. Then I would relapse. And when I would relapse... I got in the flesh more. I'll relapse like two, three, four times that day. Next day, do it again. Oh, I got to stop. Go like seven days without doing it. Relapse hard, bro. Three times in the, in the day, I relapsed. And the next day, two times. Next day, and I'm like, man, I got to do it again. got to stop. And it just went on and on and on and on. Anytime I relapsed, though, I realized that like, I didn't feel like praying to God. I didn't feel like getting in my Bible. I just felt distant. I felt off. I felt in the flesh. I felt disgusting. I felt tired. I felt weak. I didn't feel like myself. So the real question is just like, what life do you want to live? Do you want to live this sinful life that, that you may end up in hell because you're woefully disobeying God, looking at women with lust, fantasizing about women, committing adultery, and that sin could lead you down other sins and just pull you away from God, pull you away from the peace that you can, that you can and will experience from God? Or do you want to live that life of just like, hey, one day I'm going to have an attractive wife, a godly wife that I can have sex with anytime I want. And I'm going to have obedient children. I'm going to have children that grow up in a good household. Like, what do you want, man? Do you want to live in fantasy land? Or do you want to live a legitimate purposeful, meaningful life? That's the real question. You can only live one of the two. So I talked myself into it. I had like a pros and cons list of all the benefits I would get with the godly life. <clears throat> Not playing with myself. And there's only one pro to that life of playing with myself. And that only pro was just a good feeling. A good feeling. But the con to play with myself is tearing my physical body down, messing up my mental health, destroying my spiritual health, possibly going to hell. I mean, it's just not worth it, man. It doesn't make sense. So anytime I get tempted, I think about that. I lay down on the floor and I'm just like, I'm not doing this. Yeah, I'm tempted, but I know in an hour, two hours from now, I'll be good to go. I'm not going to feel tempted anymore. And oftentimes, man, I would go on this almost five-month journey. I would go 
like two weeks with no temptation, three weeks with no temptation, and then I would, ha I would have a rough day. But the rough day wasn't that rough because I had God. I had my rock, my foundation. See, a foundation takes time to pour in on the house. Same way with God. That relationship takes time to build. But once you build it and once you show God what you really want and you seek him, take that addiction away. Nothing is too hard for God to do. God doesn't want you to continue sinning. But God also knows your heart and knows like, okay, he's trying his best. I'm going to test him. I'm going to see if he's actually going to continue seeking me, even when life isn't going. See, because people love to praise God when life is going well. But when even life isn't going, but when life isn't going well, people also love to blame God. And God wants to see if you will continue to praise him and love him and worship him and tend to your relationship. Because look, uh, it's like a marriage, bro. You got to be married to Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. In marriage, it has its ups, it has its downs. So will you continue loving God, seeking God, you know, tending the relationship with God, even when times seem tough, even when times seem hopeless? That is what God's going to do. He's going to put you to the test. And many, many fail that test. Like, comment, which one we'll see next. I'll see you next.